So starting on the far end, we have Navi Baines. Navi was Rotarian of the Year how many years ago? Three. Three years ago for our district, Rotarian of the Year. Navi, uh, as we go down the line, then we have uh, Fauzi uh, Safriwi, Nancy Osborne, past president, and Ben Linford to my immediate right. I want to start out the panel discussion by just very simple. Where, are you, where were you born and how did you get to Seattle? And let's just go right down the line. Navi. I was born in Yuba City, California, and my family sent me to India when I was one. And somehow from there, when I was seven, I came with my grandfather for the first time. My parents were in Seattle. So I came to visit them, and they went back to India with me for two years, and then I ended up back with them here. Wow. Fauzi, how did you, where were you born, and how did you get to Seattle? I was born in Morocco, uh, moved to Casablanca when I was uh, early age. And uh, after high school, um, since uh, I was uh, French-speaking, um, I went to France for, uh, to check for university there. And uh, I didn't like it, and I took a little vacation to come to Canada and the U.S., visited Canada, it was okay, and then um, uh, from Vancouver, I took the bus to Seattle, I fell in love with Seattle, and I decided to go to the university here. Wow. And then I stayed, started a business, started a family, and here I am, the rest 40 is years history. later. Wow, that's fantastic. Nancy, where were you born, and how did you... Did I was born in San Francisco, uh -huh. and um, I arrived in Seattle by an airplane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, I'm a reporter. I don't accept those kinds of answers. How did you get to Seattle? Um, came to the Northwest because of a job opportunity. Okay. okay. Ben. Uh, born in Anchorage, Alaska. Also got here on a plane. I've, been, I've gotten here on a car also, driven several times. And really it was work that took me here. I went to school in Chicago, ended up back in Alaska. One thing led to another. I was in investments. There's not a ton of investment stuff going on in Anchorage. I wanted bigger and better things and found a great home here in, Ala er, in Seattle. In Seattle, okay. Okay, let's start back on the other end. Navi, I want to hear, hear your rotary story. Give me, give me some highlights as to the things that you got involved in and, and, and what, what did that look like? So Rotary for me started in high school. Uh, if you guys know, Rotaract is the young adult version of Rotary and Interact is the high school version of Rotary. Senior year, I decided to get involved in Interact because everybody was joining Key Club and I don't like doing what everybody else does. So I joined Interact and I had an opportunity to understand what Rotary was all about. I was amazed at the polio work that was going on and being interested in health and having lived in India and all the work that Rotary has done in India for um, people with polio and to eradicate polio. I was very inspired. And I kept continuing working with Interact. I uh, got a chance to uh, do a project that would send supplies for flood victims in Bangladesh, except that project was a bust. But what I did learn from it was that Rotary's network is very huge. And if there is something that you want to do, you really can do it. And then given my luck, where I rarely, if ever, win anything, I was not getting any scholarships whatsoever. And my first and one of the two scholarships I got for college were from Rotary Club of Covington. So to sort of give back to the community, I wanted to get more involved in Rotary and I joined Rotaract. And um, from there, I guess my journey started. Every time I try to leave Rotary, somehow you guys bring me back. <laughs> Um, I was president, vice president and president of the Rotaract Club of University of Washington, and I had an opportunity to also establish the district leadership uh, for Rotaract here in District 5030. And, um, and then when I was kind of trying to decide what I wanted to do next, through a conversation, Nancy somehow had me signing the application, and of course you don't say no to Nancy, <laughs> and um, then I ended up here. I'm sitting here because I did not say no to Nancy. <laughs> so, so we have that in common. You know, one of the things that we have struggled with is that there's a, not a very good conversion rate between Rotaract and Rotary. And it surprises me because the two organizations are very, very similar, almost identical in their mission. What is, what is your advice to us to help improve that conversion rate? So I know that for our district, uh, Rotaract, uh, the number of Rotaract clubs we have in the last few years, that's fairly new. But in Rotary International, Rotaract was actually started so that young adults could start out in Rotaract and then eventually move into Rotary. 
and we do have that difficulty in transition here. For someone like me especially, uh, medical school has always been my dream, my goal, and I knew I would have to go away for that. Um, but for a lot of others, it's a lot of financial issues or time commitments and things like that. And our clubs here in the district, Rotary Clubs, have been very great at working on that. So I think we are moving and progressing towards doing much better with the transition. Yeah. Fauci, you say that your father was your role model, model when it came to serving other people. Um, you've had successful businesses. You've started a family foundation. You're doing some amazing work to get computers uh, into Africa. Take me through that story. Um, tell me what it was about your dad that made you into who you are. So uh, going to a public high school in Casablanca, I had a few friends who uh, were actually very poor. Uh, uh, we were middle class, and my dad was a philanthropist. And uh, so, uh, you know, we sit having dinner with my dad and my family, and we talked about my friends, and I uh, uh, told my dad about my friends at school and, uh, and the struggle they have. And my dad uh, said, okay, well, I'm going to entrust you with some funds, and you can go and, and do some research and help them. So I, you know, he'll give me like hundred dollar, which is which was a lot of money at the time, and then I'll go and visit my friends and ask him what do you need. And uh, some will say, well, we don't have electricity at home. We do our homework in the street where there was lights. So um, I say, okay, well, how much is your electricity bill? Twenty dollars. Okay, if you pay five out of twenty, we'll give you fifteen dollars. And uh, if you don't have uh, money for rent, we'll give you you know seventy five percent of rent. And uh, I did that from age 15 to uh, after I, I was uh, gone from the country and to, uh, to college. And fast forward, uh, forward to year 2000, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, he was uh, working at Microsoft from Cameroon. We're talking about education and he says, you know, my university is one of the largest universities in Africa. We only have five computers. I said, oh my God, you know, this is, um, this is amazing. So I started thinking about what can, we, what can I do, how can I give back? And uh, at that time, um, I think Microsoft was changing their uh, system, uh, window, from Windows, I think Windows, whatever, to uh, XP, from Windows, uh, whatever, to 7, Windows 7. And most every company was giving back their, their buy new computers. So there was a lot of computers on the market. And so I start um, uh, looking and talking to um, uh, people uh, uh, in businesses. And uh, Safeco at the time uh, told me that they had 450 computers to give back to me. So I took the uh, computers uh, and we, uh, I gave most of them to uh, a lot of uh, African countries. Uh, uh, schools. So I'll go to, for example, I, uh, I visited um, Tanzania and, and uh, Senegal and Mali and, and find uh, the people that could be my partners and uh, we'll just ship the computers to them. Wow. And, and now we have grown to about 5,000 computers all over uh, Africa. Wow, 5,000 computers. Yeah. That's fantastic. Nancy, tell me your Rotary story. Um, you were our centennial president. Um, how did you first get involved in Rotary? And, and what you've been all over the world representing the Gates Foundation and Rotary International. And tell, take me through it. Well, my first introduction to Rotary was as a speaker. And I was speaking at the Shoreline Club and received a call that afternoon asking if I might consider membership. I thought that was a good idea. My employer thought it was a really good idea. And it was right at the time when they were actively recruiting women. And so I went to my first meeting and the incoming class of new recruits were all women who are um, still some of my closest friends. Um, so fast forwarding to my role in at Seattle Rotary, the centennial year was a, was a um, an amazing experience. We led up to it five years in advance with 
many of those sitting at the, at the past president's table. And we um, recognize so many of the projects that we have done all over town and around the world. And it was a great time to reflect on the power and the influence of Rotary. But what captivated me in going forward was trying to envision a project that would take us for the next hundred years, that would have even a greater impact, that would be a difficult project to, and complicated and challenging, which would take both our intellectual and financial and um, people resources to accomplish. I talked to many people, many in, in the room today, but the person who influenced most was Bill Gates Sr. who said, when I asked him what sh we should be doing for our next hundred years, and he said, well, that's easy. You need to eradicate malaria. So you went to London, was it last fall? Uh, about a month ago. Oh, about a month ago. Tell, tell me what you were doing there. I was representing Rotary International at um, the Commonwealth Summit of Malaria, and it was a fabulous experience. There were about 200 of us worldwide meeting with leaders from the Commonwealth countries. Um, I sat this far from uh, Prince Charles, but we didn't talk. Because <laughs> it would have been boring. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. I'll say it. So, moving on. Um, there were, it was fascinating to me because in the room were, th were these leaders from Pakistan, from, you know, real hot spots. But that is where malaria is concentrated and where we as Rotarians need to go after the hot spots and be able to accomplish what we can. There was a lot of talk about committing billions of dollars to research and implementation, but what was missing was the soldiers on the ground, which of course is who Rotary will be. Yeah, isn't it still something like 450,000 people a year dying from malaria? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every, I think it's every three minutes a child under five dies. Wow, so that's, that's our next thing. Nancy, thank you. Ben, talk about your, uh, your Rotary story. How'd you get involved? I got involved pretty young, right out of college. I was directing this small nonprofit, and uh, my boss said, hey, you should get involved in the community. My grandmother actually was the second female Rotarian in the Anchorage Club. So she also put the pressure on me to join, and I did. Uh, it was when my first son was just born, and so I've got a good yardstick. Now it's a <laughs> double yardstick or something of how long I've been in Rotary. Uh, I fell in love with it. It became a place for me to grow up professionally. Lots of great mentors there in Anchorage and I've been building mentorship relationships here in Seattle. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, in 2011, right before I moved down to Seattle, my grandmother and I went to India on one of the polio immunization <laughs> missions and that was a really fantastic experience with 19 of our other Rotarian friends from Anchorage. Is there a way to describe what that's actually like? I've, I've not been to, to Africa, but certainly not on a mission like that. We can take care of that. Yeah. 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 We get you signed up. I'm going to be having a little extra time starting, oh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, right. but, but what was that, that, what was that like, that's though? Right. I mean, Ben, when, was it, I mean, it's got to be just, just a palpable moment to be dropping vaccine into the mouths of babies. Yeah, it, uh, it was a very palpable moment. The, the village. It's interesting, there was a lot of, it was National Immunization Day, so there were clubs from all over the world. Uh, they, we had been there 10 days before, touring around, seeing a lot of India, and when we got to the village to do this, they had a full-on parade for us. I've never been, like, the center of a parade, and they, we went through the town with a drum line and this whole bit, and so part of it was, a, I hate to say it, but kind of like a dog and pony show to attract people, to get people out and engage, so there was that portion of it, and then there was the hands on the ground and coordinated with the folks in the village. They really had a lot of the control, but it was all the, I think Rotary plays the big role of financing, attraction, and getting people mobilized. I'd recommend if, if people go on one of those trips to organize also alongside it, maybe a, a hands-on thing like building a, a well or something like that. There were other clubs that had done that, and I thought, man, uh, it would have been fun to kill two birds with one yeah, stone. Yeah. Um, you're also, just uh, very brief, briefly as we wrap up, and uh, you're passionate about education. Um, 
tell me about the Education Committee, Winners for Life. Why is that so important to you? Yeah, as you get involved in the Rotary Club, there's lots of avenues to flex your service. And I'm interested in education, got involved with that. And we have this flagship project of the Winners for Life. Got involved with that, trying to figure out how we could make that program run smoothly and do the best by the students that we connect with that a lot of times don't get the same attention that we give. So, well, How about a round of applause for our panel? <laughs> Nobby, Fauzi, Nancy, and Ben, thanks you guys. You know, hearing Don talk about the past presidents of this club, Roy Denny, it's, it's humbling to be a part of this group. I think I'm the 110th president of this club, and it's been such an honor. And the thing that you don't realize until you become president of this club is how much support you get from past presidents. They are there whenever you need help. They are there always accepting your phone calls, giving you advice that you need. So this group is so vital to, to the well-being of this club and to the guidance and the governance of the club. So I'd like, first of all, let's give these past presidents a round of applause. Thank you so much. So, President-elect Cindy, come on up. We are going to do the gavel pass. We're going to go, I'm not going to say oldest, I'm going to say most experienced president, down to the current, and then we'll hand it off to Cindy. So let's start the toss. Don. Thank you. And here's the final handoff. Cindy, it's yours. Thank you. Thank you. So, wow. The, the tiny hairs on my arms just like stood up because I got chills with this lineup. I just can't tell you I, how much, I, I'm just so honored to be part of this uh, distinguished group up here. So I wanna turn the uh, spotlight back to Mark in a second, but first, I just wanna let you know that I just returned from Toronto at midnight last night from the Rotary International Conference. Um, there were about 10 of us from Seattle, four there, and about 30,000 Rotarians from all over. Nigeria. Colombia, Shanghai, etc. And we heard about Rotarians making a global difference through global projects, from wheelchairs to water. Uh, Laura Bush spoke uh, yesterday on literacy, and today Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will be closing out the session. Um, it was fun and inspirational, it was a celebration of service. And so I want to invite you and your friends to come to my first Rotary meeting of the year, which is July 11th. It's also going to be a fun uh, celebration of service. So I'll introduce the new leadership team. Um, and also we'll have a musician and philanthropist, Daniel Pak, as our first guest. So he's a metallurgical engineer. Um, he's originally from Hawaii, and he plays reggae music. He's kind of like the uh, Asian Bob Marley. Uh, so he's going to tell a few stories about how he amplifies music, uh, or amplifies youth voices through music, especially troubled youth. And then he'll also, you know, play some music and just bring that ohana spirit to um, our first meeting. And ohana means family in Hawaii, which I think is an appropriate way to bring in, like, you know, the new Rotary year with my Rotary family. Um, so back to Mark Wright. Mark. Um, Thank you. What a wonderful year it has been. You've led with heart and humor. Uh, with your connections, you raised Seattle Forest profile in the community by having King 5, KUOW, GeekWire, CrossCut, and all these media people come in and help us tell our story. 
And you and Hamilton have given us access and insight to important issues, like issues of humanity, the Rwanda Girls Initiatives, and Penny Legate's story on uh, opioid addiction in Seattle. And you challenged us to think about important social issues, like the Me Too movement and the Muslim for Dummies program. And with your reach, you brought in entrepreneurial leadership programs like Steve Ballmer, Detlef Shrimp, and Howard Bihar. Mark, you are a class act and also a tough act to follow. <laughs> yeah. So I found this quote, um, which I will end with, and it made me think of you. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. Thanks, Mark, for your leadership. And please come here and accept uh, a little token of appreciation for your service this year. Cindy, thank you. You know, I saw a side of Cindy on Wednesday night that I haven't seen before. <laughs> I'm just going to say the roasts that hurt the worst, that were funniest, came from her. <laughs> she seems so nice. But Cindy, I think after your year, I, I think people are, are not even going to remember my year. I think, I think um, I'm so excited for your year as president. I have no doubt it's going to be a fabulous success. Um, normally at these meetings, our immediate past president um, does the transition, uh, past president Kathy Gibson, and I told her this last Wednesday, um, I, I said thank you so much. She made so much time for me leading up to this presidency, helping me get prepared and also walking me through a lot of things that I had no idea about. So uh, she's not here today, she's still at the International Conference in Toronto, but she does have a video greeting, so let's roll that. Greetings, fellow Rotarians. Wow, how fast the year has passed. Today, we honor our outgoing club president, Mark Wright. It's an annual rite of passage as he transitions to our past club president. Before I present Mark with his new past president regalia, let's pause and reflect on the year under Mark's leadership. Mark. You have represented us well, and you have made us proud to be Rotarians, especially Seattle Four Rotarians. During your year at the helm, at this very podium, we learned a lot as you brought compelling business, civic, and sports leaders to this stage so that we could learn, be inspired, and be engaged. In addition to weekly programming, you and your awesome leadership team moved us forward in building membership and in living our motto, Service Above Self, with more than 30 projects, service projects this year, that helped have an impact on lives locally and far and across the world. I think this has been a year of discovery for you, and we were grateful that we could come on that journey with you. So on behalf of a very grateful club, it is my honor to present you with your gold past president name badge. We also have your past president pin and as an expression of our gratitude for your service, a plaque which reads, presented to Mark Wright for your dedication and leadership while serving as president 2017 to 2018. Service above self, engaging leaders. Congratulations, Mark Wright, and thank you for a wonderful year. I'll introduce you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks again to Kathy in her stead, past president Sue Nixon. I'm officially handing off this gold badge, pin, and with that, I just want to add, 
Mark, we're going to make you endure just the tiniest bit more. What you didn't know is the past president party, we, we actually had to make things up to roast Mark with. We were like, it's too good to be true, this guy. So we all had to make things up. It was quite fun and creative process, and he handled it with grace, as you can imagine. What I want to add to everybody's comments about Mark is as I was hearing everybody talk about him, it, 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 it dawns on me that this guy makes every single one of us in the room feel like his favorite. Like we all feel like he is specifically talking with us, that he is specifically acknowledging us and treating us with such incredible grace. And that's an authenticity of leadership that I, I just have watched in awe this entire year. So thank you, Mark. We are so fortunate to have you. Thank you, Sue. So now just uh, a few final words. I wish I had a teleprompter because I could maintain much better eye contact at this point. <laughs> it's hard to believe that uh, my journey as president of this club started in this room a year ago. It went faster than I ever thought it would. Former Starbucks president Howard Bihar, as you know, kicked off our year I wanted Howard to be our first program for a reason. While he's not a Rotarian, Howard embodies all that we aspire to be as Rotarians and as leaders. His servant leadership philosophy is admired by people and companies all over the world. Howard is proof that you can do the right thing and make a lot of money at the same time. But it's much more than that. Howard is all about knowing who you are and then having the confidence to do the right thing because you know who you are. Howard encouraged us to wear one hat. That is to say, be consistent in all areas of our lives, to honor our true selves by being who we are and who we should be regardless of the situation. He also urged us to serve those who work with us and for us and to do that with humility. What an inspiration he was and is to this club. So I've tried over the past year to inspire you, to challenge you, and to help us become better versions of ourselves. I've learned a lot about myself over this past year. I've learned what some of my strengths are, but more importantly, I've learned what I need to work on. I made some mistakes, but that's honestly why I accepted the job. I wanted to learn and grow as a leader. And you know, as business leaders, you learn the most when you make mistakes, because it causes you to course correct. I've learned a lot more about all of you as well, which has always delighted me. And it's inspired me to want to be better, to serve more, to care less about my needs and more about the needs of others. One of the lessons I've tried to teach my kids is to choose your friends carefully. I tell them that the people you surround yourself with will either make you a better person or worse, but nothing in between. And that's what I love most about Rotary, being with you every week, talking with you, sharing experiences with you, knowing all of you has had a profound impact on me. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get through this without emotion. But that's what makes me a great anchor. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's be honest. I've cried on TV, so why not cry here? And it's being recorded as we speak. But I have learned so much from you. I had a chance earlier in my career to spend a day with Don Hewitt, the creator of 60 Minutes. And for me, that day was a dream come true. Meeting that iconic figure of my industry. At the end of the day, I told Don that meeting him was a highlight of my career. His wife, Marilyn, who was next to him, turned to me and said in her New York accent, I feel sorry for your life. <laughs> I'm just this kid who went to school in Pullman and I was just like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> But I'll be honest, meeting Don Hewitt pales in comparison to serving as your president for the past year. This truly is one of the things I will cherish as a highlight of my life. And I especially want to thank you members who've been here for most of your lives. This is your club. This is still your club. 
you have stuck it out as we have transitioned from a very exclusive, very closed, very, I'm just going to say it, old and white club to a much more open, more diverse and inclusive one. We still have work to do, but the fact that you stayed and you are committed, the fact that you're here today still says a hell of a lot about you and the quality of your character. So let's hear it for the old guard. And now a word to you newer members. This is your club too. It will become what you want it to become. So I ask you to dedicate yourselves to serving this club, take the action needed to bring about the changes that we need as an organization to become fully diverse and fully relevant in today's world. Don't check out, stay checked in, because there will always be a need to help people who are suffering. And service, let's face it, will never go out of style. So in closing, I want to thank you for supporting me. I plan to do all I can to support President Cindy during her year. It's going to be fantastic. I already know it. I know you'll do the same. So thank you for encouraging me, and most of all, for choosing to make a difference in the world by serving other people. A lot of you could be on a very exclusive golf course right now, <laughs> somewhere in the world. But you're not. You're here. You're here in this room with us. And that says volumes about who you are. So thank you for allowing me the honor of serving as your president. Thank you. <laughs>